Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we are here to talk about this episode of Candy and the Gang, aka Hustle and Flow. Whoo, child. Let's just get into it. Before we do, if you don't mind, let's please just take a moment of silence to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. All right, so let's get into this episode. This episode kicks off with Aunt Nora, Mama Joyce, and Aunt Bertha sitting around the table. Uh, Aunt Nora and Mama Joyce are trying to convince Aunt Bertha that she should set up an online dating profile. And Aunt Bertha lets them know the only way in hell that's going to happen is if Joyce sets her up a profile and finds them two men and they go on a double date. And Joyce said, oh, well, you ain't said nothing but a word. So she gets out her lipstick. They start putting on rouge and things. And next thing you know, they're taking pictures and posting them on the internet to get them a good bingo, buddy. And I wish them much success. Have a good time. Party hard. Then we move on to Chandrika and her boyfriend, June, meeting Dom for lunch to discuss the fallout from this housewarming that they were uh, disinvited to in the middle of the street. They sit down to talk and Chandrika asked Dom, so how'd the night go? So Dom starts telling her, I went inside and I told them I came with Dom and June and they're outside and Safari was like, but we didn't discuss that. They're not on the guest list. And I looked at Patrick and I'm like, what do you mean? Because you were the one who invited them. And Chandrika's like, okay, well, thank you for saying that. And so June says, I get all of that, but if we come together, we leave together. I'm just trying to figure out why you wouldn't have turned around and come back outside to your friend. Dom seems really offended by it. Her thing is, well, at that point, it was not just like being at the club because my bosses were there. And, and so he says, but your alliance was with her that night. And I'm of June's mindset, like... I don't know, maybe I'm old school, but I'm raised on the we come together, we leave together, period, point, and ain't no blanks. That's just what it is. And so the, the idea that you would go in this party, whatever this was, and kind of leave your friend outside, not at least go outside to say, hey, I'm going to stay. I hope y'all have a good rest of the night, something. I don't know, that's just me. The reason I think Dom is so offended offended by it is because I mean on top of the fact that yeah you probably feel bad because you're wrong but it's kind of a right message wrong messenger type of situation because this is Chandrika's friend and so it should be Chandrika that's addressing this issue with Dom and not June it does kind of seem like why are you sitting here letting your man check me about whatever issue you got with me so then we move on to the restaurant well, the restaurant's parking lot, uh, where Patrick is outside collecting his $10 a car. Chandrika's boyfriend pulls up in a black Mercedes with a red bow on it. And he uh, gets out and apparently he must have spent all his money on the car because he was having some trouble finding the $10 for the parking. So, you know, maybe he was just, they maybe didn't have any cash on him. I don't know what the deal was. But Patrick sure made it known that, you know, he had to come a whole lot of ways to pay this $10. And if you got to come this many ways to pay $10, what is you doing with a Mercedes? Uh, but what he was doing with the Mercedes is bringing it as a gift to Chandrika. And he wanted to surprise her because she's been working really hard. And Todd happened to be standing outside and gets introduced to uh, June. And they talk about the whole housewarming. It seems like to me... June is more offended by everybody than Patrick, who was actually who kind of withdrew this invitation while y'all was standing outside on the corner. And Todd suggests that they all get together so that they can all get to know each other. After they chat, June calls Chandrika to come outside. She comes outside to see her new card. Of course, she's super excited. And then the rest of the staff comes outside to see her car. And so everybody's outside celebrating the car and nobody's inside serving the customers. But we know that by now. So after he presents her her car, you know, I guess he's, you know, feeling himself and he decides he's going to check the rest of the crew. So he sits down with Torin, Brian, and Shardo to talk about 
the housewarming and that, you know, he felt like they should have all come outside. They should like, okay, now, now, now you running out. You feel like everybody should have just up and left this party because they wouldn't let y'all in. Like what in the protest hell are you talking about? It, it just, and again, even if it's the right message, it's the wrong messenger. Why? And Torin said the same thing. Torin's like, you know, I'm kind of offended that I'm being checked by Shandrika's boyfriend when Shandrika is my friend. Why haven't I heard from Shandrika that she's feeling any kind of way? And Brian explains them it wouldn't make a bunch of sense for everybody to just come outside and leave the party. I felt like the host of the party uh, and Torin who was a mutual friend, was coming outside to hash it out. So why should 20 people come outside? And Brian, you know, that's what you're here for. You offer the common sense because, you know, it ain't, it's not plentiful around these parts. Next, we move on to Brian's apartment where they are all getting together because he is having a funeral service for his wig. The wig has gone on to glory. It has been fried and it's died. And now it's time to lay it to the side. They're all there. He is dressed like a mourning mistress and they are going to bury this wig in his yard. So they go outside and bury the wig. They all come back inside because ain't nobody got time for his damn shenanigans. They bring up the fact that, yeah, uh, Chandrika, your boyfriend been uh, running around checking us. So you got something you want to talk to us about? And so Chandrika goes off on how they are all shady because they all knew she was outside. Nobody came outside. And Brian said, well, your beef should be with Dom because that's who you came with. And that's exactly who her beef should be with. This is misdirected anger, dear. Chandrika is saying how she doesn't care. It doesn't matter to her because, you know, she has her man. And Torn is like, no, obviously you care. Because you said something to him, which made him say something to us. And it made me feel some type of way. And clearly you're bothered because she kept taking these shades on and off. I just, I mean, it about drove me nuts. It just made me anxious. All that, taking the shades off, putting the shades on, taking the shades off, putting the shades on. Girl, girl, girl. What in the anxious hell is wrong with you? So Chandrika goes stomping out mad. And shall we moving on? I ain't got time for these sharp fighting. We move on to this triple date between Candy and Todd, Patrick and Safari, and Chandrika and June. Safari is just rude. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't like that little girl. She is in the confessional talking about how, you know, she doesn't need this little play date because she feels how she feels and it is what it is. And so Todd starts explaining that he wanted to bring everybody together because he wanted, you know, them to get to know each other and to have a comfortable relationship since they have partners who are exes that work together. And Safari says, oh, so this was your idea. Candy looked down that table like, girl, you must ain't seen me moving furniture on TV before. The girl, watch your tone. So Safari starts saying basically that her reasoning for not wanting them at the house warming is it's just an unspoken rule based on the nature of the relationship that Patrick and Chandrika had, that they were in a relationship, they're exes, and I just don't want her there, and I don't know what kind of energy they were coming with. And so Chandrika's like, what would make you think that we were coming with, you know, any type of energy? And she's like, I just, I don't know y'all. The, the answer is, as beautiful as she is, she is highly insecure, and she has a need for control because that's the only way she can maintain whatever security she does feel as if she is in control of the environment at all times. So then Candy and Todd start to ask them about the history of their relationships, how they met, how long they've been together. And so Chandrika and June are saying how they met on Tinder and were engaged a month later. They weren't expecting it to be anything serious, but you know, they fell in love. And... They go over to Patrick and Safari and ask how they met. And Patrick says, she slid in my DMs. And she says, no, that's not what happened. He was in my DMs for at least two years. And Candy says, oh, you must have looked at his page and thought, oh, he's like this. So I have to treat him like this. 
And she <laughs> comes out and says, yeah, I thought he was a trick. Yeah, I thought he was a trick. Yeah, I thought he was a trick. I was like, okay, he can get me a little massage or something, you know. So Patrick asks her, what is a trick to you? And she says, somebody you have sex with and they give you money. What in the pretty woman hell is wrong with this girl? When Todd said, who raised you? Oh my God. That's the one thing I want to know. Who raised you and what rock are they hiding under in shame? So, so if you thought he was a trick and you know that him being a trick means you would have to have sex with him to get whatever you want, does that mean you use a prostitute? And so everybody's sitting around kind of looking like, and Patrick's like, no, that ain't me. And Patrick said, the confessional, yeah, I ain't that type of dude. Ain't no girl that could say they ever got anything from me but some D. And, you know, I find it ironic that um, little Miss Safari thinks she is everything. And she's going to bottle it up and sell it. And you ain't getting nothing from this man who is proudly declaring how he ain't giving nothing versus Sean Drieker who's sitting over here having cars delivered to her while she at work. Sometimes you'll be beefing with the wrong people. You might want to talk to the girl. So we move on to see Ty going to the barbershop and Patrick is visiting him at the barbershop to get advice about proposing to the same girl that just said she thought he was a trick when they met. I, I, I just, I'll be damned. So Todd starts explaining to him how he knew Candy was the one and he tells him, you know, I have some reservations because it kind of caught me off guard when old girl was calling you a trick. What's up with that? Patrick is talking about how he's the only one that has to be with Safari. He doesn't really care what anybody thinks about her. And then he goes into this twin flame thing. And when there's a per when a person is born, there's two sides of the soul split and two, they come back together, they mirror images, baby. Let me tell you something. Sometimes the twin flame is about reflecting yourself to you so that you can grow. That ain't always who you're supposed to marry. But that's just my understanding. So while... He's over talking to Todd. We see Candy is taking Safari out to talk to her because she's wanting to know what did you mean when you said you thought he was a trick? And Safari says, you know, it was the image he was putting out. He was saying he wanted to see how many girls he could smash in Atlanta. He was always putting this image out of, you know, him being a player and all these other things. And he was a ladies man. So that's why I thought he was a trick. And so Candy said, well, if you thought he was a trick, why would you reach out to him? She says, well, because I wasn't going to take him serious. So I wasn't going to have anything serious with him. Here's the thing. There's a difference in having something that's casual and having something that's transactional. A casual relationship is not the same as I do this in exchange for this particular form of compensation. So was it you just weren't going to take him serious or did you think he was a trick? And Todd presents a real question to him. Todd says, listen, all that sounds real good, but here's the thing. Would she say the same about you? Because she talks about him like some flunky she is just giving the grace of her presence to like girl candy is asking her you know how do you feel about him because the way that he talks about you is like you are his everything but you just kept saying yesterday how you didn't think he was the one he didn't seem like anything to you so how do you feel about him this girl says to candy okay yeah he's the one and candy's oh yeah good girl if if just tell me what i want to hear was a person I mean, damn. So Candy said, well, what makes him the one? And she said, you know, just the way he treats me. Uh, and, you know, he makes me feel so respected. Like at the housewarming, I just felt so respected. And, you know, the way he loves his mom inspires me to want to love mine. And Candy starts to tear up. 
about how emotional this has made her. And Safari doesn't like to talk about her family because it makes her emotional. And I'm just so sorry. I'm sure this child has been through some things. I'm sure she does have some family issues. Uh, I'm sure she does need to focus on those and kind of overcome those. I am not moved by this. Now, I'm still back there on the trick train, okay? I am not moved by the the way he love his mama make me want to love mine. Girl, wait a minute. You got mama issues. You thought this man was a trick, which tells me what you was over there doing with you. Like, why is nobody alarmed? So then we move on to Brian hosting a friends gathering at his apartment. Rashad, Dom, Torin, and Chandrika are all coming together to just kind of kick it. Well, they first ask how the triple date went. And <laughs> Chandrika said, well, Patrick got called a trick. And old girl said he was in her inbox for two years. And I asked why would they invite us to this event only to not let us in. And he blamed you. And so that segues them into the housewarming discussion. Rashad decides he wants to apologize for not coming outside to check on Chandrika. And he says, I apologize. And he goes on to say, you know, I told Dom I felt like she should have come outside. And Dom lost it. I'm going to give you a problem. I'm going to give you the problem you've been looking for all this time. Her voice drives me nuts. These antics drive me nuts. This is 100% the deflection that somebody does when they know their dad ass wrong. That whole, I'm a act of ass and I'm a basically to scare you out of holding me accountable. Girl, please go sit down. So Dom starts going off about how, you know, I'm glad this came up and you're trying to make it sound like I was a bad friend and your opinion of me as a friend is invalid because you're new and this... And she's going off on Rashad for having an opinion, but she's not addressing the fact that she left her friend outside. So Rashad checks out. He gets up and leaves. He's, you know what? I ain't got time for this. And now she's going off on Brian about how he needs to get his friend. And Brian is like, look, I'm not that friend. I'm not about to be jumping in your arguments. Now, if, and I, well, I'm not asking you to jump in. I'm asking you to get your friend. When you see him talking to me, you tell him don't talk to me. Baby, he just told you he's not going to do that, okay? So if you decide to engage in battle, then you better be ready for the chitty chitty bang bang. And Brian says in the confessional, Dom is my girl, but she's wrong. They came together. And that's why she's acting like this, calling the boy all out his name and all kind of stuff. Girl, because unless you can twerk your way through a street fight, I, th this ain't what you want to do. Just going off on people because they said, I, I, I didn't agree. I thought you was wrong. Oh, now you want to fight? Go lay down. And the argument just rolls downhill from there. Everybody mad. Everybody goes stomping out. Dom leaves. Chandrika leaves. And it's just Brian and Torin left just looking at each other. Moving on. So the episode ends with Patrick going by Aunt Bertha's house, who is his grandmother, to meet with his Fantastic Four, which is Aunt Bertha, his mom, Weenie, Candy, and Mama Joyce, because he wants to uh, show them the ring that he's gotten for the girl who thought he was a trick. Uh, and so, yeah, they're telling him, yeah, everybody is just going to go ahead and agree that he go ahead and propose to us. What I want to know as where is the whole, I don't believe you should marry committee now because I need them to jump in. I don't think Aunt Bertha know this boy that ate that girl spaghetti. And I don't think she know that girl was calling this boy a trick because she would be hollering, I don't think you should marry. Where's the uproar now? I was just in utter shock at the end of this episode. I mean, how in Sam hell does this girl sit up and say she thought this boy was a trick and ain't nobody moved? Nobody but Todd. Todd told the boy, listen, these are real terms for my generation. We used those terms for real. These words have real meaning. Can't just be going around saying that shit and think we go, oh yeah, we'll throw rice at your wedding. Uh-uh. But that's the end of this episode. That's it. That's all. I ain't got no more. I thank you so much for coming down here and listening to me, letting me get it off my chest. As always, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I love you. Mean it. Bye.